We're looking at the night sky from here in North Georgia. This is on May 15th in the evening just after sunset, around 9 p.m. We're facing north. We see a sky filled with stars. The stars form patterns on the sky that are leading us to areas called constellations. Constellations have defined borders. They're kind of like states on a map. Anywhere you point on a map of the United States, you point within the borders of a state. And anywhere we point on the sky, we point within the borders of a constellation. These are the borders of the constellations that are up now. It's bright patterns of stars in each area that act as the landmarks so that we can find a constellation in the sky. Our first constellation is high in the real sky. In our view here, it's sort of in the middle of our screen. And it's a very famous constellation you may know of as the Big Dipper. We look for the Big Dipper by looking for four stars that make a cup and three stars that form a handle. Now it's part of a larger constellation called Ursa Major. Ursa just means bear, so it's the Big Bear. We see here the Big Dipper in the Big Bear is just sort of part of the bear, including his strangely long tail. But that curved tail can actually help us find another constellation in the sky. If we follow the handle of the Big Dipper, we can actually arc to Arcturus. It's a bright orange star in a constellation called Bootes. And we look for Bootes by looking for a sort of kite shape that's going to be coming down off of Arcturus in our view here. I'll put up an outline and a picture so we can see that a little better. Bootes is a person. He's known in Greek and Roman mythology as the ox driver or herdsman. So in a lot of Greek and Roman stories, Ursa Major there is a bear. But in some of the stories, instead of being a bear, the stars that form the Big Dipper, the seven stars of the cup and the handle, are actually oxen. They're pulling a plow, and they're being driven by Bootes here across the sky. The field that they're plowing is the entire northern half of the sky. Basically, as the Earth turns, we will see these stars rise in the eastern half of the sky and set in the western half of the sky. So they sort of circle around the northern side of the sky. And they're circling around a specific star, the North Star. So the North Star um, is called Polaris, and we look for it by looking for that Big Dipper, seeing the cup of the Big Dipper, the end two stars of the cup, the ones that are furthest to the left right now, they point, and they're pointing right now down or to the north at the North Star. They're called the pointer stars. So the North Star, Polaris, would be sort of near the center bottom of our screen right now. And it's always leading us north because Polaris is right above the North Pole of the Earth. So that star, everything is appearing to turn around it as the Earth spins. And that's including the Big Dipper, Ursa Major, and Bootes. Now, Polaris is actually leading us to the Little Dipper. It is the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. We find the North Star first, and then there are two very faint stars that form the, then the rest of the handle, and then four faint stars forming a smaller cup. I'll put up the outline so we can see it. The Little Dipper is much fainter and harder to find in the sky than the Big Dipper, so we usually use the Big Dipper to point us to the North Star first. And the Little Dipper is leading us to Ursa Minor, which is the Little Bear. Again, with a strangely long tail. And the Big Dipper is also seen as a bear in some other cultures as well. There's different cultures around the world. They all have their own constellations. And for several Native American tribes, these stars were also a bear, or sometimes a bear being followed by three hunters. And that was the three stars in the handle of the Big Dipper. Now, we think that many different people saw these stars as a bear because as the stars circle around the sky, they change their orientation. And bears are one of the few animals that are known for standing on four legs as well as standing up on two legs. And so sometimes in the year, the Big Dipper would appear to stand on end and perhaps remind people of a bear. 
There are many galaxies located around the Big Dipper in Ursa Major. These are galaxies that can be seen with a small telescope or maybe a pair of binoculars. I'll put up the position for one of them we're going to look at. It's called M101. We're going to take a closer look at it by zooming in on this galaxy, kind of like we're looking at it through a telescope. We have telescopes at University of North Georgia. They're at our observatory, which is about four miles off campus to get away from city and campus lights. However, it's closed right now, and that's mostly because we're constructing a new building. So there's a new building being built out there right now that's going to house bigger telescopes. So definitely check their Facebook page for updates on when it's finished, when we might reopen uh, later in the year. And the Facebook page is under North Georgia Astronomical Observatory. But in the meantime, here in the planetarium, we're going to zoom in on M101. So here we see M101 much closer up. We see this galaxy. It's a spiral galaxy. That means it has a flat disk made out of clouds of gas and dust and stars. Flat like a pancake. It's the same type of galaxy as our own Milky Way. We see this galaxy face on here, so we're seeing the spiral arm patterns across the disk of the galaxy. Those spiral arms are actually a density wave. So it's basically a wave traveling through the clouds, compressing the gas, making it denser along the spiral arms. And that's where new stars will be born. M101 here is 21 million light years away. A light year is how far light travels in one year. So that means the light we see here took 21 million years to travel to us through space. We didn't always know the distances to galaxies. In fact, we didn't even know they were other galaxies. Telescopes used to not really be able to pick out individual stars in these galaxies. They looked like fuzzier patches in the sky. And so we thought they could be smaller clouds of gas inside our own Milky Way. In fact, we've only known the size of the universe, how far away some of these galaxies are, for about a hundred years, a bit less. There was a great debate a hundred years ago, on April 26, 1920, between astronomers who were arguing this point. How big is the universe? Are these galaxies in the Milky Way or outside? And it was between two astronomers, uh, Herbert Curtis and Harlow Shapley. And Curtis basically thought the universe was giant, that they were far away distant galaxies. But Shapley thought the universe was a more reasonable size, that these were clouds, small clouds within the Milky Way. And it would turn out from evidence found a few years later that the universe is gigantic, much bigger usually than we can even imagine, and that these are distant galaxies outside of our Milky Way. Who actually was the first to figure that out? Well, we attribute it to Edwin Hubble. He measured and recorded some distances to stars inside a galaxy called the Andromeda Galaxy. So not M101 here. I'm going to bring up a picture of Andromeda so we can see that galaxy. It's actually the closest major galaxy to ours, and that still puts it at two and a half million light years away. So here we're seeing the Andromeda Galaxy. We're not seeing quite as face-on of a galaxy, but it's still a spiral galaxy with a flat disk. And Edwin Hubble looked at some stars in this galaxy called Cepheid Variable Stars. So these are stars that pulse. They change their brightness at a very regular rate. And that rate that they pulse at actually tells us how bright the stars are close up. If we know how bright they are close up, then we basically can figure out how far away they are when we look at them in the sky. And this is what Edwin, Edwin Hubble did. He figured out and measured the distance to the Andromeda galaxy. The relationship that he used, basically how we know that Cepheid variables pulse at a rate that matches their brightness. That actually came from a different uh, astronomer, a um, woman named Henrietta Swan-Levitt. And that's a really important way to measure distances that we still use today. Now, we're actually going to zoom away from the um, M101 here and bring down the picture of Andromeda, and we'll talk about a few more things in the sky.